And Chin makes a very interesting statement about Brendan and Dana, which is fucking bizarre. Because if you know anything about Brendan and Dana, you know that they had a very personal beef because of Brendan's time at the UFC and how he was trying to fight for fighters pay, which wasn't him fight it wasn't really him fighting for fighters pay. It was more so him being annoyed that the UFC wasn't allowing him to get as much money as possible because I think at the time, um, even though he wasn't one of the top fighters, I remember Brendan was actually making quite a bit, a bit of money at the UFC because that was when they allowed you to put the sponsors on their shorts, which I still don't get why they don't do. If the UFC doesn't want to pay their fighters a fair wage or a fair salary for whatever reason, which I think is horrible, right? Some of the fighters in the UFC don't even make 20 grand a year, which is fucking crazy. If they don't want to pay them a salary, then why don't they just let them make up the difference by having their own sponsors on their shorts? You know, like that might be the best way to kind of get around. If you don't want to give the money, fair enough. Um, they, you only pay them when they fight, cool. But at least let them, you know, make money by having sponsors on their shorts. But they don't do that. You have to wear their fight gear, the sponsors. They don't get a cut out of it. It's fucking weird. But anyway, regardless, Brennan was very big on that. He's making a lot of money and it worked out for him. So he kind of was fighting Dana White because of that. And then um, it turned into a personal beef when they started arguing about, you know, when Brendan basically let the accusation, well, put out the accusation that Dana might have fucked Ronda Rousey back in the day because you're speaking about how Dana and him are Eskimo brothers and blah, blah, blah. So it's been a pretty personal and deep-seated beef. Now, for some reason in the last few years, Brendan has kind of pivoted now and started to like suck off Dana. I'm not too sure if it's to do with the deal that they signed with ESPN or whatever, but Brendan suddenly got on a 360 or one got on a 180 and tried to act as if he's Dana's friend, like everything's okay. But it's like, you can't just say things about people like that. And then when you choose f to be over it, it's over now. The beef is done. It's like, no, that's not how it works. That's, if anything, that's like a form of gaslighting, right? That, that idea that you can just decide when it's over and that you don't have an issue with somebody because you moved on, they should move on also. It doesn't work out. Like and also, Dana's also known as somebody who's super petty. So him thinking that Dana's going to be okay with him is odd because, you know, he's never going to be okay with, with Brendan. And if you think if you think about the recent stuff that happened with him, where Brendan put out that rumour about, uh, what's his name? About Hamza, right? He put out some uh, conspiracy theory about Hamza being in collusion with the UFC about missing weight. And then Dana dropped that truth bomb and said, oh, when the journalist at the end said it was Brendan that made up the rumour, he said, oh, that makes sense. And that sent Brendan in another tizzy. He made another response on Instagram, ranting at fucking Dana, calling him a you know skinny jean wearing sneakhead, which is basically him. And it went back and forth. Anyway, since then, he's still trying to suck him off. And Chin also adds to the suck off by insinuating that Dana and Brendan would be friends if they just sat down and had a coffee, which is a weird thing to say. But hey, let's play the clip. Yeah, Scott's amazing. He's the one that brought so many UFC champions from Strike Force, right? He's the one that found all he this talent. Strike Force. Yeah, I mean, he started Strike Force, had got all this talent, and those talent, those talented people became champions in the UFC. Here's the question: is Scott Coker too nice to run a fight organization? <laughs> is he too good of a guy? And too friendly because Dana's a shark. Yeah. You look at any like Fortune 500 company, go meet those guys. It will hurt your feelings how nasty they are. That's why they're there. Yeah. Scott Coker, you'd want to sit and have coffee with them all day. Dana, I don't think so. That's also not a fair point to make, actually. That all, all, all fight league or all um, sport in league ceos owners commissioners whatever it may be called are pieces of shit and evil no I, don't, I wouldn't think so are they very um you know maybe uh business minded do they basically don't lead with emotions and it's all about business it's never personal maybe but would you say they're all evil and pieces of shit i don't think so personally i don't think that's the case it's a, it's a weird thing he has in his head that you know if you to in order to be a great businessman you also have to be a piece of shit person i don't think that's actually the case to be fair no i, know. I mean no i know no <laughs> chin. oh good question i know i've sat with both of them i know i mean you could tell scott is seems like a more chill dude for sure i'm telling you he's really yeah. nice yeah. yeah super nice yeah da da you know just... if, if i remember correctly dana and brendan have never really liked each other anyway for the minute it's zero i think it's then from oh was it that one fight card do you guys remember there was that clip of Dana talking about, remember there was, it doesn't happen too much now, but back in the day during UFC, um, Megan O'Leary would interview Dana after fight cards. They stopped doing it now because I think Dana was too hot-headed after the fight cards, but Dana would let it all out. You'd say, oh yeah, that fight was horrible. That was boring. He didn't really try to knock him out. He wasn't trying to fight. You know what I mean? Like he'd go fucking crazy. And I think after one particular fight card, I forgot which one it was that Brendan was on, it wasn't a good performance from him. 
and Dana kind of called him out. So I think they've never really been cool with each other anyway. Dana's never liked Brendan. And Brendan's always got, you know, you can see from Brendan's personality, he's one of those type of people that he thinks he's smarter than what he is. So it wouldn't surprise me if he also thought he was deep down better than Dana or something, you know? That kind of weird battle they have between each other. In order to get that level, you got to be a bit of a savage. Those NFL owners, go sit down with Jerry Jones. Let me know how it goes for you. They're fucking savage. When Steve Jobs was alive, go sit down with him. Savage, dude. I do think though that like if you and Dana, because you don't you don't work together anymore. If you and Dana were just like together, you guys would get along really well. I we think the- Chin, you are fucking read out to thinking that. If Chin thinks that Dana White and Brendan would get along if they were in the same room together, is absolutely insane. If anything, they'd probably come to blows. That would not end well. Like that would not end well. Can you imagine if Dana and Brendan were in the same room? Come on. Dana's going to say the most hurtful thing straight away. He's going to let it out straight away. He's never liked Brendan. Think about it this way. Dana's really close with Joe. Dana's really close with Theo. A lot of people that Brendan's close with. And I'm sure in the background, Joe's probably tried to reconcile. I'm sure Joe Rogan's tried to make Dana see the good that he sees in Brendan. But Dana still doesn't see it. So Dana's got all these people around him that like Brendan as a friend or like him as a person who are probably telling him, hey, He's a fine, he's a nice guy, nice guy, but he doesn't give a fuck, <laughs> right? And obviously, Dana doesn't need Brendan either. It's like one of those weird, it's one of those weird instances where somebody doesn't bend to Brendan's will because I guess because Brendan's got association with Joe Rogan, most people would probably be willing to let bygones be bygones because Brendan's Brendan and he knows Joe. But in this one occasion, Dana's already got himself established. He doesn't really answer to anybody. So he doesn't really need Brendan for anything. So he can afford to just say, no, go fuck yourself. So I don't think it would ever end well, personally. And I also think Brendan's lying about how he's cool with Dana. I think if Brendan also saw Dana, he wouldn't be just be like wanting to hug him and shake his hand. All those feelings of resentment he had for Dana all those years ago would also come up. I think he's just saying he likes him, trying to be cool with him, to act cool on t- to act cool on you know content on TV, to make it seem like he's more mature and grown up. But really and truly, if he was in the same room as Dana, it wouldn't end well either. It ended the same well it ended with fucking um, what's his face, uh, with what's his name behind that fight. Fine on everything. Yeah, the fact that you guys work together, that's why it was kind of like agree. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's why like. It, 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 it's weird. it's weird how long it takes for the public to get over something like. No, it's not weird. I love how he's pretending that to ign- look. Should we get up? Let's get, let's get it up. Let's get Brendan. Let's get let's get it. Uh, claps back at Dana White. Let's see if we can find the, t- the tweet. Someone must have a screenshot of the tweet because he's acting like it's no big deal. But the things you said about Dana, bro, like most people wouldn't be okay with you after the fact. I love how he's pretending like it's no big deal. What do you, let me see if I can find the, the Instagram, the Instagram caption. Someone must have it as an image here. He says some crazy shit about it. And again, it's, it's okay to say it. I think he was in the right to say what he said. But to pretend like it wasn't a big deal is fucking insane. Let's see if I can find it here. Has anybody got it here? Oh, man. Where is it? Someone must have it. Let's see. Uh, in, let's write Instagram. Because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's going crazy here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Here 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 we go. So here we got something, right? Let's let's write here. So I guess this, this is under yeah, this is under I, I, one of Izzy's posts, right? It says, I think this is Izzy posting a clip of of Brendan talking shit on him. Because again, Brent, Brendan's a sly hater. He is a big hater, but he kind of doesn't really admit it. But um they don't write, write, write the following. Such a fucking tool. What the fuck does this idiot know about the sport or business? At Stylebender, for you to be listening to one of the for to one word from this moron is a waste of your time. The guy went six and five in the UFC. The only thing he could teach you is how to get KO'd. Tune into it. Tune in like this out. They don't fucking get it in. Brendan replied, "Who look? Uh, whoa! Look who got a break from folding Ronda Rouse's from Ronda's laundry. Oh, that's actually quite funny, actually." Look who got a break from folding Londres laundry, laundry to jump on Instagram. Bravo, sir. He's right, Stylebender. What do I know? Listen to the bald guy who has never been in a fight in his life. Do that. You're a, you're a monster. I was referring to guys like Little MMA, Saki. With a, okay, cool. So they said that, right? So that already back and forth should be enough to tell you that we're not boys. Another one. 
let's see what else Brenda said about him. Uh, yeah, look, 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 look at this, look at this one, look at this, 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 look at this caption. This is hilarious. Yes, Joe Rogan is one of my best friends and played a significant role in my post-fight career, no doubt. You're right about that, Dana White. Two TV shows, sold out worldwide comedy tour, two successful podcasts, and just booked my first major movie. Super grateful. However, if it weren't for the Fratinas um, loaning your ass millions of dollars to invest into an idea that wasn't yours from the start, you wouldn't be shit. How's it feel to know once the real businessman brains left, the UFC has been a shell of itself, if with you at the forefront? You tried it all, CM Punk experiment, begging Brock to come back, and praying at night for a Conatex. Tough job to do without Lorenzo holding your hand, making sure you don't mess it all up. Can't feel good. You're a cardio kickboxing coach in Boston in your 20s. Oh, sorry, you'd be a cardio kickboxing coach in Boston in your 40s, hoping to grab a ticket to my stand-up front row if Lorenzo Fratida didn't save your ass. Also, this is no way to talk to an Eskimo brother. Last warning. And he's, and again, in that clip, he's saying, I don't know why people can't get over it. This is proper beef. Like, this isn't like... This isn't like some subtle shit. This is like actual, actual beef. And that's and the, and, the, and the last comment he makes, something about skinny jeans. Let's see if I can get that one. It was something about skinny jeans. Let's see if I can get it. That's the last comment he made, right? Let's see if I can find that one where he said something about him skinny jeans. Let's see if I can find it. Is this the one? Yeah, that might be the one actually. This might be the one. This might be the one. Something about skinny jeans or something. Let's see if I can find this one. Bear me a sec. Bear me a sec as I find it. Bear me a sec as I find it as it loads up here. Um, okay, cool. There we go. Let's, let's play this. Oh, can we not? Can we not read it? Okay, cool. Here's the one. Yeah. So here. Oh yeah. Here's the one. So he says, he says, "Oh God, here we go again." Um, what's that? Is I've been. I've been. What's that? I've been nothing. Oh, let me take the sound off anyway because this is gonna fucking copyright me. Here we go again. I've been nothing but cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Here we go again. I've been nothing but cool and thought you'd learn from last time you mentioned my name and got destroyed. Unfortunately, not surprised you're a bully. Always have been. You put on a pair of designer jeans and some hip sneakers and you'll think you're cool. That sounds a bit like him though, doesn't it, right? Um, you're still a dork with a frat bro vocabulary. Spider-Man meme. Um, calling me and numerous people dummy, dumbass, fucking idiot because we have questions about the chaos at UFC 279. Also, no one is talking about the gate tickets. I was referring to pay-per-view buys, how UFC 279 was trending, which you don't release to the public, but will say it went fucking great, bros. Sorry, we just don't buy what you're telling us. After lying numerous times about the sh to the sheep media, you, what's that? You pick to attend events. You don't have the balls to call out the call you out just in the recent press conference you went and caught lying about extra stuff okay let's let, I'll let it load out again but anyway you get the point you get the fucking point right you get the fucking point brendan brendan and fucking dana have been warring for a while they said some really hurtful things to each other and for some reason he thinks it's all good i don't know why every move you make is a copy of a vince mcmahon only thing you have in common is that you're both on steroids and you dress like assholes need i remind you your origin story is a failed cardio kickboxing instructor who had two rich friends in high school to fund his business now go make a cool video with the nelk boys to stay relevant and have your PR team come up with a good press story to distract the fans away from the fighter pay and how they have to wear those awful Under Armour rock shoes and won't see a dime, dummy. P.S. Quick stealing my shows on Thick Boy Network and recreating it on Fight Pass, K. Okay? Also, leave Pat Minitesh alone. <sighs> so for me, that sounds like beef. Yeah, I'm not forgiving somebody when it says something like that about me, especially if you're Dana. Dana already, like, he's already a very petty, vindictive bully of a person. Imagine if he actually doesn't like you and you actually have a personal beef. Do you think it's ever going to be cool between Brendan and Dana? I don't think so. So, this idea that Chin has that if Dana and Brendan get into a room together over coffee, they're going to be fine is absolutely insane. Ridiculously insane. Let's go back to it again. And him trying to gaslight the fans. I don't know why the fans just don't get over it. It's like, bro, did you see what you you said about him? Like, <laughs> that's why it was kind of like agree. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's why. Like, it, it, 
it's weird. It's weird how long it takes for the public to get over something. Like even when I do my uh, tour, fans come up like, "Dude, you see Dana? Dude, stick it to him." Or I loved when he stuck it Dana. I'm like, God, that was years ago, dude. Really? I mean, you didn't like, stick it to Dana. You're like, you're fight, no, fighting I, for I, I, fighter I pay. I won ten nine. I love how he says years. I love how he says years. You can't even pronounce years. Uh, look how he says years. To him. Or I loved when he stuck at Dana. I'm like, God, that was years ago. Dude. Years ago. Years. <laughs> years. Y-A-R-I-R-S. Years. Instead of years. 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 <laughs> stick it to him. Or I loved when he stuck at Dana. I'm like, God, that was Years, years ago. Dude. Years. Really? Years. I mean, you didn't like, stick it to Danny. You were, like, you were fight, no, fighting for a fighter to pay. I won 10 9. To be fair to Chin, you know, he knows where his bread's buttered, right? Chin is a podcast producer. You know, there's not, you know, there's not many successful podcasts around that can probably pay what Brendan's paying him. He's e allegedly got equity in fucking Thick Boy. I get why he's doing it. I mean, he's making sure he knows where his bread's buttered. He's making sure he's keeping fucking Brendan sweet by gassing him up a little bit, but this is kind of cringe. I stuck it. But you're, you're for fighter. You're saying about the sponsorship shit because it affected sense. me, and it affected everyone else that had sponsorships. Yeah, and now that I'm older, a little more wiser, I'm like, oh, he wasn't making a decision off of. I love how you saying now he now he's older, and he has more money. He now understands why Dana is greedy and doesn't want to pay the fighters a fair salary, or that, or wants to pay them the least possible and get the most out of them. He understands now. Why capitalism is a good thing. Oh, I get it now. Why you should keep all your money and not pay the your, your the people that make you all the money. Yeah, I get it. I get it. How can this hurt Brendan? Where I took it so personal. Yeah. He was like, "How can?" Of course, you should take it personally. Why wouldn't you? If you know, honestly, there are some fighters in the UFC roster who don't get twenty k a year. There are some fighters in the UFC roster who do not have, who do not get paid a salary base of like twenty k per year. Do you know how that? How insane that is. And they literally put their lives and bodies on the line and don't get 20k a year from the biggest, you know, fight league in the fucking world. I make my business more valuable. Talk to the top guys. Even though I was a top 10 guy, I was probably top five in sponsors in, in, in that division. Probably top 15. I don't think it was top 10. But he, he would have no idea. He, he's, he's, he's worried about his business. Yeah, he has Not the Brendan Schott hundreds business. and hundreds of fighters. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. But remember, at the time when you're fired, you, you're in your own world. So I took it so personal. I got so mad. Launched the show, talked all this shit. And I I give him kudos for that. Now I'm older. I'm like, oh, I get it. I and get now it. that you're running your own business, you absolutely get it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Chin sucking off. This is really weird to see Chin in this way. He's really actively going out of his way to, like, you know, make Brendan look like a good dude. Doesn't work, though. 100% get it. 100% get it. I have no issues with him whatsoever. Even on Golden Hour, Eric, because uh, uh, Nick and Theo went to go do a podcast with Dana. I'm asking Nick about it. He's talking about Eric's like, oh, I thought you guys hate him. Or when I was on the Fight Companion, um, and he's like, man, you're being way cooler about Dana these days. I'm like, I'm 40, dude. He's done great stuff. Like, my, this entire network is based off UFC content. Like, I owe a lot to that guy. I have no issues with him now. Zero yuck, issues. Yuck, 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 yuck. Rogan's like, I liked it when you're more of a hater. Like, it, <laughs> dude, isn't Dana your best friend, one of your best friends? So am I. Wouldn't you want us to get a, get along? No, you, you can't get along after what you said and what he said. There is no getting along again. Honestly, let's go back to that fucking screen. Where is it? This one? How can you get along with somebody after they say these things? Like, am, am I the only one that's redacted here? Like, and again, he has every right to say what he said about Dana because Dana was being a, an arsehole to him. But there's no there's no coming back from this. There is really no coming back from saying the stuff that was said like this. How can you come back from that? <laughs> you you took a break from folding Ronda's laundry, <laughs> and you've got a wife and kids. Let's remember too, Dana has a wife and kids. So Dana Brendan is not only baiting up Ronda, he's also baiting up Dana and his and his situation putting that into turmoil and we already see what Dana does to his wife you know what I mean it's very dangerous games to play but anyway that's that's out on that one what are you guys saying here in the chat um, yep AZ he's not a draw sure thinks he's a contender just like him saying he loves Bobby Dana and Bobby Lee were never the, like the guy exactly big up uh, Ryan Joseph appreciate you 7 days for someone that hates Dana so much he relies on him a lot exactly 7 days good point 